the Democratic Alliance in Guazulu Natal is taking the acting Umgeni municipal manager and the MEC for cooperative governance and traditional affairs to court. The DA wants Sandile Butelezi, the acting municipal manager of the Umgeni municipality, to call a council meeting after earlier efforts had failed. For an analysis on issues surrounding the failure of municipalities to convene council meetings, I'm joined by Professor Yap de Fissa at uh, the Dula Omar Institute. He is a director there. Professor de Fissa, thank you for your time today. So we're seeing this lack of uh, agreement and the non-sitting of, of council meetings, not only in Umgeni, but we also saw uh, the Nelson Mandela Bay uh, sitting not being able to take place yesterday. So what does this mean? What are the consequences of council not meeting? Good afternoon, Tommy, and, and thanks so much for, for having me. So, yeah, within 14 days after the declaration of the results, the council must meet uh, and must elect its office bearers. And if it doesn't do so within 14 days, it would act illegally. There's a legal problem. Um, it doesn't automatically mean there's going to be an immediate rerun. There's some, uh, seems some sort of noise out there that, you know, there's going to be immediately a rerun of the elections, and that's not true. Uh, it is a legal problem, and the provincial government would then have to look into the issue and ultimately, as a last resort, could dissolve that council um, and, uh, and then an election would have to be done again. But, but, I mean, that's really something that will only take a few months later down the line. We've seen it in Brazil in 2016 when Pluto uh, did not constitute and after six months it was dissolved. So we'd be far away from that scenario. Um, but a failure of a coalition agreement uh, uh, obviously is a problem because then if you have that meeting, you don't know how the chips are going to fall. Uh, and it can be a very unstable arrangement. And what we're seeing happening in Umgeni is that the municipal manager must convene that first meeting because obviously you don't have a speaker in place yet. So the municipal manager convenes the first meeting and the first item is then the election of the speaker. But in Umgeni there's a dispute about who is actually validly the municipal manager. There is a municipal manager but it was suspended, um, wanted to convene a meeting, but then the DA said, no, you're not the municipal manager, you've been suspended and now there's a dispute about who is actually the municipal manager that must convene that meeting. And ultimately, the court must now decide who is uh, responsible for convening that meeting, or if all else fails, the provincial government would need to step in and convene that meeting um, on behalf of the municipal council almost. The argument there of the suspended municipal uh, manager is that the term of suspension has now actually ended, and so they are rightfully able to preside over, over that meeting. Uh, surely this should be something uh, quite easy to determine. Oh, I would imagine so. I don't have insight into the details of it, um, but I, the court will have to, have to make a decision. Uh, and unfortunately, this is, this, is, this is symptomatic of local government. We see a lot of these kind of disputes um, being thrown around and, and thrown at the courts, but the courts have to decide who actually is the MM, who actually is the speaker, who actually is the mayor. Um, uh, funny enough, we, well, it's not funny, it's, it's actually uh, quite, quite disastrous in some municipalities where sometimes there are two speakers that have both been elected at separate meetings and now the courts have to figure out who is who in the zoo. And it has to do with an absence of, of governance arrangements in those municipalities and factionalism um, and allegations and counter-allegations uh, uh, flying around. In the end, you know, sometimes just collapsing governance in the municipality. This one is now thrown out in the open because it's such a crucial meeting that needs to be convened by the MM. But ultimately, these things are, in a normal scenario, not very difficult, difficult to manage. In the case of the Nelson Mandela Bay, um, Anneli Kaba uh, says that the extension of um, the municipal manager role there was legal um, and, and yet it's been said that it's otherwise because that term of extension was indeed illegal. Uh, talk to us about the mechanisms there and how it can be deemed illegal. Well, if, 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 if a municipal, if, if a municipal uh, or if a municipality does not have a municipal manager in place, it needs an acting municipal manager. And the council must take a resolution to appoint an acting municipal manager. And if that can only be done for a specific term, because you can't have an acting position for, forever. You need to appoint a municipal manager. Municipal manager is appointed by the council. And if the council is in disarray and, and constantly 
disagrees on about everything or even fails to convene meetings or councillors don't pitch up, then that, that uh, uh, decision can be postponed and postponed. Um, so the scenario in Nelson Mandela Bay, again, I don't know the details, is, is about who is the, 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 the acting municipal manager. Was that contract extended with a proper council resolution? Because it's such a critical appointment, it cannot be done willy-nilly. You need a council resolution to extend that contract of the, of the acting municipal manager, and there are legal uh, limitations to how the municipality must go about this. Again, not very difficult to manage in practice if you have a normal, stable council with good legal advice. Um, but if things are politically chaotic, as they have been in Nelson Mandela Bay, then these things become a problem and, and uh, they, they rise their ugly heads, particularly now uh, when, when you need these critical meetings convened by the municipal manager. And, and what does municipal law say about the convening of, of meetings? Does this actually eventually end up having to go to the courts, as we are seeing with the DA? Normally, normally not. The normal course of events is, is that the, the first meeting, the municipal manager convenes. Uh, if the municipal manager is not available, um, or the, you know, just the absence of, of a municipal manager, then the MEC for local government will come in and convene that meeting. Uh, during that meeting, a speaker is elected, and then the speaker is responsible for convening meetings. The convening of meetings in, in municipal councils, it, it sounds like a small administrative trivial issue, and normally it is. It's not very complicated. However, in local government, we often see bickering and fighting and factionism, which then uh, spills over into these positions of the municipal manager or the speaker, um, and then the convening of meetings becomes a hotly contested decision, because sometimes, for example, a speaker would, would have to convene a meeting, but he or she knows that at that meeting, he or she is going to be voted out. So then it's a bit like, you know, will the turkey invite you for Christmas? Um, no, he won't, because he knows what's happening at Christmas dinner. So you, you then get a situation where speakers become reluctant to convene meetings because they know that the meeting is aimed at, at unseating them. Uh, and then you get all kinds of legal bickering, and ultimately the courts must come in. But the courts have already said on a number of occasions, please stop approaching us for these trivial issues. This is not difficult to manage. Please, please get your act together um, because these things are, are hampering service delivery dramatically and are ultimately unnecessary. Professor Yap Defesa, we thank you so much for your insight uh, during this time. He is director at the Dalla Omar Institute.